Infection Control Part 5, Introduction to Nursing Concepts. As we look at documentation, we need to think about the fact that most of the charting anymore is on the computer, but we would have to look at what types of things would be vital to chart. We're going to look at a series of pictures, and I want you to think about important things you would want to chart on each one. This is an IV site that obviously is reddened and infiltrated, and it would need to be removed. On that, I would document around the site, how it's red around there, feels warm to touch, is the patient experiencing any pain, the fact that the IV was removed, the abacath was intact when it comes out, and then what kind of treatment did you follow up on? That site definitely needs to be warm packed. It needs to be evaluated to make sure that they aren't getting a phlebitis or a systemic infection. And an incident report would need to be made because it's an unexpected event, as well as contacting the doctor. The new IV would be put in the other arm to allow this area to rest and to uh, be able to see the healing. The next one is a cellulitis where the outline of the cellulitis has been drawn so that you can tell if it's getting worse or better. I would definitely uh, discuss how it's on the lower extremity, on the anterior side. You can see how shiny and tight the uh, skin is because of the edema to that. Is it warm to touch? Rubra would be the color I would document that as because it is very red and then be looking at you know what kind of treatment they're on and is it improving I would definitely look at your white blood cell count to see is there any elevation in the white blood cell count are they on the antibiotic and then elevating that extremity to help decrease the edema the next one looks like an open wound you can see the marking around it the redness is uh, most likely disappeared or gotten smaller because the marking uh, the skin in between looks healthier again. The open wound would be measured. You would measure the width, the depth, and the length of that and document it as you know the wound edges are not even or approximated, that the inside of it is a, a rubra color, and that if there's any odor or drainage noted to that, and then what type of dressing would go over that. Um, that looks like a stage three of uh, injury or ulcer for some reason on that arm and are they experiencing any pain again look at the white blood cell count to see if they have an infectious process and that would need to be a sterile dressing change this next one is a wound with what we call eshkar that black is deadened area and we would debride that to remove that black eshkar this looks very necrotic it looks chronic it looks in the inside the red is healthy that means there's blood flow anytime uh, you have the blue it's more of a cyanotic and it's a lack of blood or oxygen to the tissues here we can see that this skin is stretched it looks like it's tried to heal in several places um, but it's probably maybe a person with diabetes or with poor circulation and it's not healing very well uh, with that eshkar on there. Again, you're going to measure the length, the width, and the depth. You're going to measure the eshkar. You're going to also go out and measure then the area that's uh, more open uh, with the reddened. This next one looks like it's probably on an ankle. And it, if you were, you know, looking at that you would say probably medial or on the middle or inside of the ankle uh, it's very red around the outside it looks like it's silvery around the two open areas now is that silvidine cream or is that kind of a scaly tissue I'm not sure from the picture but we again would need to measure around and mark around the outside reddened area and then we would measure the o two open areas and document them as inferior and um, superior wounds on that leg. In looking at a patient with an infection, um, our patient here has had a stroke, also has a wound infection. Um, a urinary tract infection would be something that uh, a patient with an infection is very common to have in the hospital. And when we think about diabetics with very poor uh, blood sugar control. Uh, diabetics oftentimes have poor circulation. It predisposes them to a higher rate of infections and we're going to talk about that more 
uh, in the elimination unit as we look at what types of uh, patients are at much higher risk. As we compare and contrast hospital or nosocomial versus community acquired, uh, we know that different patients have different needs and as a home care nurse, uh, things that we do or assess are going to be just as high uh, as the patient that is assessed in the hospital simply because um, we are the eyes and the ears. There isn't a doctor always coming in in the community um, patient to see them and so that community health nurse really has to have very good assessment skills. Your hospital acquired patient obtain that in the hospital and your community acquired is usually your immunocompromised uh, older adult chronic illness and we want to make sure then that we are uh, picking up and getting those treated as, as early as possible uh, with that. Some other special considerations, you know, both ends of the age spectrum, pediatric and elderly, again, are immunocompromised, are always at high risk for infection. Our pediatric, if they're not breastfed, they don't get that colostrum, that initial immunity from the mother. Um, premature babies have very immature defenses, and so they um, also pose very high uh, risks for infectious process. And then are they able to produce the immunoglobulins that, uh, you know, after a year of age they have? Our older adult, oftentimes they have many other illnesses, chronic things going on. Changes in uh, many of the body systems causes the older adult to be predisposed to infection. Dry oral mucous membranes, they get more mouth infections. They have a weak cough and they have that decreased ability to swallow and many of them will aspirate. Uh, the cilia in the respiratory tract don't work as effectively. The thinning of the skin, they have many more skin tears. Uh, the T and B lymphocytes, the production is reduced and they have decreased immunity. So many things with the elderly predispose them to the infectious process. Our immunocompromised are stressed in many ways. When they have a high blood sugar level, like with your diabetic people on steroids, they have higher blood sugars and that higher blood sugar is just a breeding ground for the bacteria to grow because they now have something to eat while they go. Um, they decreased in anti-inflammatory responses and then the cortisone levels. Anybody that's under stress for any reason, physical or mental, are immunocompromised. Again, looking at our white blood cells just in review from what we talked about before, um, they each have a special function and we have either the granulocytes or the agranulocytes. The granulocytes have the granules in their cytoplasm. Those would be your neutrophils, eosinophils, and basophils. And your agranulocytes are your lymphocytes and monocytes. Your neutrophil again is that first one to the site of the infection. It's very active but runs out of energy very quickly and they increase in numbers of mature cells is known as that shift to the right and increase in the immature cells is that shift to the left and it occurs when tissue breaks down from allergy, burns, myocardial infarctions, other such things. Your eosinophils are allergic and parasitic. They increase during the healing stage of that inflammatory process and become active uh, during later stages. Basophils are chronic inflammation in the healing stage, which is normal during an infectious process. Our lymphocytes are agranulocytes and they are viral infections, help uh, combat your viral infections. We will also see a decrease in the lymphocytes uh, with sepsis or an overwhelming infection. Sometimes that will happen. Our monocytes are that second line of defense after the neutrophils. They are small, uh, larger, and so with that larger cell comes a little slower reaction, but when they get there, they're very efficient at removing the dead and injured cells and kind of cleaning up the area that's had the infection. So why do we as nurses need to know all this good stuff? Uh, we need to know because we look at white counts, we make suggestions and work with physicians or uh, healthcare providers in knowing when that patient is overwhelming, when we need to, you know, maybe um, think about antibiotics and be on uh, real good assessment skills to identify them early. 
as we will be talking about in the elimination unit, many of our elderly show signs of infection differently than younger people. Urinary tract infections in young people oftentimes will be frequency of urination, burning with urination, and flank pain. They just don't feel good, and they know it because it burns when they urinate. Older people in the nursing home or older people at home don't have those symptoms. They take that infection and they become confused. And working in long-term care, you might know this already, that many of those nurses are very in tune to the fact that Mabel has changed her personality. She's different with her cognition. And they will call and ask the doctor, can we run a UA up? Mabel's very confused. She's not herself. And I wonder if she has a UTI. And in catching it early, we can get them on an antibiotic within that long-term care facility and get them treated without it becoming a systemic infection that overwhelms them and they wind up being hospitalized with IV antibiotics. Other causes for the white blood cell to go up are a leukocytosis, things like hemorrhage, trauma, um, any of our circulatory diseases, cancers or metastasis, and our malignant diseases. So lots of reasons for that. Why a white cell would be small. Penia is small. Leuco is white. Below 4,000 for a white blood cell is usually an overwhelming viral infection. It can be a diabetic that's um, having a lot of health issues. You're alcoholic. People that are taking radiation or have acute leukemia might have low white blood cell. These people are very high risk for infection because they don't have the white blood cells that can come if the body recognizes it's in trouble. As we look at that differential then, the neutrophils, monophils, all of those, they help us know about the maturity of the cells and give us the in information that helps us know how severe is that infectious process in the body at this time. A term you'll see used often, I talk about it in mental health because some of our mental health medications, our antipsychotics, cause a condition called agranulocytosis. A is without. When you take medical terminology, A is without. Granulo is those cells we've been talking about. Cyto is cell, and osis is a condition of. It's a condition of not having any red, white blood cells. And um, leukopenia, or real small, and neutropenia, neutrophils, is a potentially fatal condition. What you will see on state boards is they will ask, what are early symptoms of agranulocytosis that a nurse would need to be aware of? And one is a sore throat. When the patient complains of a sore throat, um, that is a time when we need to get a white blood cell count drawn to see where their um, white blood cell count is at this time. Is it overwhelming and they have a rip-roaring infection with a white count of 21,000? Or do they have um, agranulocytosis where they have a very, very small white blood cell count and any type of infection is going to overwhelm them because they don't have the white cells to uh, counteract that. Clozaril is the medication that I talk about in mental health that can cause agranulocytosis. Special things are in place uh, when that medication is used by uh, patients that need an antipsychotic and one is weekly white blood cell draws. They only get a week's worth of medication. As soon as they can see that that white count is okay, they will give them another week of medication. And they do that for quite some time just to make sure that that patient is um, maintaining a healthy white blood cell count. So as we look at just uh, kind of a review of this unit, this is something we teach early because it falls into every unit when we get into elimination we are going to be putting in Foley catheters when we get into the wound and skin we will be looking at infection control policies that go with sterile technique and sterile procedures when we put uh, patients in a isolation room what kinds of things do we need to do to protect them from us and also us from whatever infection they have because we need to keep our patients healthy we need to keep ourselves healthy we need to keep our infection control rates down because all of that is very reportable and we want to maintain um, you know a healthy population so prevention is very important this ends infection control